So, I'm up here today. Quick update on me. Um, I'm about a week and a half into my second round of chemo now. I've had some really rough times. The first week is, is pretty miserable. Nausea is bad. Um, my first round of chemo, I really wasn't able to do much. It, uh, it takes a lot out of you, but at that time I was having problems with breathing, coughing up blood, um, a lot of pain from the cancer. It, it spread to my shoulder. So much pain in there. I was basically stuck in a chair on pain pills just trying to get by every day. Um, some really good news is after the first round of chemo, the pain from the shoulder is gone. It Now it's completely gone. After the first round, it was manageable, tender, but what happened was there was a lot of good things that happened okay on the first round i stopped coughing up blood i started breathing better the phlegm that was keeping me up at night at night i would basically choke on like mucus that would build up and that would wake me up that went away to where i could actually sleep the bleeding stopped the shoulder got a little bit better um i'm at the point now where after once that stuff started to heal, like I'm, I, I, I was actually able to use my shoulder and I pulled a muscle here really, really bad. And I was also, because of coughing, having a lot of pulled muscles in my side. I had, oh my, I thought I had a hernia for a little bit. It was so bad. But I had so much pain up through my side, I really wasn't able to do anything. I, I did build another coop. I've tried to work in the shop a little bit, but with this round i'm actually doing a lot better the muscle stuff has gotten better i'm actually off the pain pills for the shoulder i can use it it's feeling pretty decent it's still weak but it works um so yeah yesterday was a i, I kind of overdid it i was feeling pretty decent so i was worried about today but last weekend i had a friend come up and i was actually the first person that's ever actually seen the boat in person we came up here and took a look at it and it was absolutely disgusting it's just been sitting i haven't been up here doing anything so it's just dirty so i decided if i felt good enough today i brought up some water and some soap and uh we're going to try to clean it up one thing i have to do is get the tarp off greatly appreciated i wasn't able to do it we've had some bad storms and one of them completely ripped the tarp off of the boat I wasn't able to do it, so my dad actually came up here, and he has this thing tied down so dang tight. Like, I don't think there's a eyelet in that tarp that doesn't have a rub through it. I always kept it kind of loose; it was easy to get on and off. But yeah, I, as much as I appreciate it, it's going to be fun getting all that off. But yeah, that's what I came up yesterday. Um, just doing little things here and there. Like I said, I still have a pile of stuff in my office. That needs to go on this boat and i came up yesterday to measure something and i was like man if i don't clean this up every time i go in and out of that door i'm tracking stuff in and out and i don't want to track it all inside so that's why i decided yesterday afternoon i was like okay if we feel good tomorrow what we're going to do is come up here and clean it up so there won't be much video on actually doing anything today besides the main goal is to clean it up before i run out of energy now I make it to about two o'clock or so, and then I start slowing down. Um, so yeah, usually by five o'clock I'm done. I don't want to overdo it because I do have some work that I need to do. But this thing's just so disgusting, I want to get it cleaned up. So then we can start doing some work on it and not tracking stuff everywhere. It's just dirty and spider webs and bugs and stuff. So let's get to it. This is how nasty this thing gets from just sitting around.
as I came in here yesterday, I started, I was like, I track all this stuff inside. And we got a lot to do. We don't need messing up the carpet and everything. So we're gonna clean this up. I'm not sure if this bright idea is gonna work or not, but every time before, when I washed this, I had to hook jugs up to the hose that I installed on the boat. It's just a pain in the butt, and it only, I, since it's plumbed to bring water from the outside, I have to, and I can only fit like a little, about a gallon jug in there, I'd have to refill that gallon jug constantly, and then it would get dry. It was just a pain. So I figured I'd use my little bilge pump here to uh, flush the motor and run the motor. So why don't I bring the pressure washer up and hook it up and see if I can't get that to work for the boat. A lot of this stuff is stained. Well, that worked after all. I got a 50 gallon drum with a bilge pump stuck to an old garden hose so it has the right end to attach to the pressure washer. I had struggled a little bit at first, but I figured out it's best to let the pump run, run for a little bit and then fire that up. And it sucks it just fine. I don't think it has as much pressure as the house, but enough to get the job done. We sprayed the whole thing down. There's so much staining from the sap and stuff, which like I said, there was the front's got to be repainted. Even just now barefoot, it's, it's too slick. I still have some of the original paint and some grit. I'll put that in there. But, I tell you, cleaning, all that moving, takes it out of you. It's harder than you think. When I got her cleaned up, I think I'm going to take a little break. Since it's uncovered, I might try to do a couple of things here this afternoon, but I got to rest for a little bit and eat. But I'm glad that pressure washer worked. It makes it so much easier than trying to use a bucket. And the thing is, I don't have water up here. So I have to haul it. And if you're wondering why I'm in jeans and a long sleeve shirt to clean a boat is I can't be in the sun. So this keeps me covered up. It is a pain, <laughs> it's a pain in the butt to crawl around in wet jeans, but you gotta do what you gotta do to get it done, right? Hopefully we'll be back in a little bit. I think I mentioned in a previous video that stuff everywhere. I made this box for the radio. It's gonna go up there. We're gonna get that old bracket down. I tell you what, after all that cleaning, I am tired. I bought a whole new thing of stainless steel screws because the ones I had before you couldn't do anything with. I remember right a while back I checked and made sure that the connections from that piece of crap radio and this one are actually the same this whatever is causing you to worry right it now works. believe at Nixon and White House counsel John Dean for example Determine Jesus. So it's nice that it has a remote 
And that's why I like the other one. I wanted a remote because I wanted to be able to control it from being outside there. Or if you're laying over here, you don't want to get up and go change it. So that's nice. It's in, it works. So our little white box, it worked out pretty good. I think it looks good up there. All right, I always admit when I'm an idiot, I'm a useful idiot. I was, I mentioned this in an earlier video about installing a one wire alternator, it has to be at a certain RPM. And not being able to shift it to neutral and use the throttle. Well, I'm so used to having the lever on the top or a push button here that I didn't think on this one, you pull it out and then move it. I was like, I was actually looking at buying a new one because of this thing and I was, they're super expensive. Like you're paying anywhere from 400, around $400 up for them. And this one works perfectly fine. It just didn't have the button. Well, it turns out it doesn't need it. The whole shifter, it's kind of hard to do, but the whole shifter comes out and then the throttle moves. But we still have to figure out why we have up, but we don't have down. So I'm gonna pull this off real quick. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's why the wire's disconnected. It's completely come undone. At least this is an easy fix. And what I did was added, it almost looks like they weren't cut, but they actually were pinched. But I added a waterproof heat sink and that should hold it a little better. Both ways now. Uh, all right. So that was an easy fix. I pushed them in there, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. Like I said, it almost looked, I remember putting that back together, but I didn't do a good job. That's what happens when you don't do a good job, you do it again. And I know so many of you out there are probably like, oh, that was simple. But if it's not what you're used to, you forget stuff like that. So at least we know that works for what we need it to. We can put that alternator on. I'm trying to remember all the projects that like where I had started and where I had stopped. You gotta realize we're two years later and I work well over that now and I work nonstop and ended up with cancer. But uh, the one other thing I know we absolutely have to do, oh, I'm sorry. The other thing I know I absolutely have to do before I can put it in the water is uh, drain the fuel out of. If there's some fuel in it when I got it, I put some fresher fuel in it. I know there's probably 20 gallons, 25 gallons in there. It's pretty close to empty, but we know it's bad. Even though I put stabilizer in there, it, it doesn't matter. It's been too long. So I've got to get out out. But I've got things, I've got a new head, I've got a spotlight, I've got a windlass. It's gonna be quite a challenge. Um, some other stuff I wanna do, so as I have the energy to do it, we're gonna to try to. But I think for today, we've probably pushed it enough. That's about all, all I'm gonna be able to do, because I still gotta get this thing covered back up. But we got a little bit done today. I appreciate you watching, hope everybody's doing well, and. Getting out there and enjoy that water, it's time now.